What's going on YouTube? Appalachian Smoke Wagon here with another video. Today I'm going to reply to a comment I got on one of the Draco videos asking for a parts list. So I'm going to go through all the parts on this build and uh, yeah, that's about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. The channel's been growing pretty good. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone commenting. Had some great comments. It's awesome. Channel's actually really growing. It's really surprising me. Uh, well, let's get started. This is a reply to Mr. 1976 Impala. Okay, all the parts on this Romanian Draco. I got, I purchased pretty much everything from KUSA, Kyber Customs, Carolina Shooter Supply, and Palmetto State Armory. And we'll go through, I got me a little cheat sheet here. We'll go through the parts. I've done some research this morning and found everything where I, uh, where I got most of it, what I can remember. But yeah, we'll show clear. We'll take this mag out and chamber is empty. We're going to start with the gun itself. It's a Romanian Draco with a 12.3 inch barrel. And when I got it, it had, it had a buff. Actually, when I bought it, it had a, uh, a brace system like this with the forks that go under the hand grip, but it had a buffer tube and like a SBA three, like a, looks like an AR brace. That's what was on it. And it was actually really sturdy. It actually worked a lot better than this triangle. This triangle brace is kind of wobbly and wonky i don't like it actually the cnc warrior brace a lot of guys have uh, recommended in the comments i will be picking one of those up very soon so i'll update you when i get that going but let's get back to the build list from we'll go from the muzzle the muzzle device is a jmac customs it's got the BDS 37 blast shield, which is this, you can put it on it and it sends all the blast forward. Like if you're shooting a close, close proximity to people, just kind of courteous to put this on. It actually increases the recoil a little bit with this on. With it off, this uh, muzzle device from JMAC actually reduces recoil a lot this uh muzzle device is a i can't remember all the nomenclature it's a uh let's see it's a 360 14 to 1 left-handed face mount wolfman and i think that's because it will uh accommodate the dead air silencers wolfman you just uh it'll direct thread on here which hopefully I hope to get one of them in the near future. Also suppressor times are supposedly at a uh, very short wait time, which is awesome. So hopefully I can uh, get in there and get me a suppressor here real soon or a silencer guys debate on silencer or suppressor. I think on the patent it is silencer, but it's a, this muzzle device is a face mount. And there's no timing to it. You just crank it on and it, it mounts straight to the face of the gas block right there. And I've never had any trouble with it walking loose. It's been an awesome muzzle device. I'm glad I got it. All right, on to the, let's see what I got here, the light. This is a Streamlight uh, ProTac. HLX. It's a dual fuel, a thousand lumens. It will take uh, two CR123As or a 18650, but not all 18650s work. It will take the Streamlight rechargeable 18650, and I forget the exact model number on that. But I always run CR123As in this light. Just because I can keep them on hand, keep them in my kit. Just I always have extra batteries for it. 
And so far, it's been a good light. Uh, like the blast comes out from this device and hits it, and the lens gets like I had to clean the lens this morning. It was a uh, kind of gray from soot coming out of the muzzle brake, but it cleaned right up. And yep, this has been a good light. And to place the light forward like this, this forward light mount, let me look at my cheat sheet. It is an Impact Weapons Components SMX CXL, which stands for Side Mount Cantilevered X Long One Inch Light Mount. And it's machined out of aluminum and it's it gives a little bit, but it's been solid man That's, this thing has been carried up against the body uh it's not been abused but it's definitely been used and it's held up really well none of the bolts have ever walked free but i use blue loctite on everything so you should use blue loctite or whatever color loctite whatever you're using calls for because things bolts on guns will walk loose i promise you use loctite all right, we got that. Next, I put a front sight post in here, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's a very thin, precise front sight post. The stock sight post was a big square, not real precise. That sight post is a uh, KNS front sight ball post. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's it's a really thin post with a little ball on top. And I actually took a white paint pen and painted the ball white on mine to give it a little bit of contrast and works really well. The iron sights on this thing are zeroed. This is a pretty accurate gun. I've never really shot it out past a hundred yards, but out to a hundred yards, this, this thing surprises me really accurate and then after that we got the optic mount the optic mount is really awesome you take your rear leaf sight off and uh it's really easy to install like if you got any kind of mechanical know-how you can install this and kind of the way it works this like this screw goes in and it like pressure fits in there it's it's a cool design and they have a bunch of different models of this this is the uh let's see Atero arms rmr mount so of course this is a hollow sun which works off the rmr footprint but it fits right on there and it's been solid and it just works so Atero arms you can get them with, uh, they come off and they have Picatinny here for like an EOTech, or you can get them with the Aimpoint footprint or like the Trijicon MRO footprint. There's there's a bunch of different models for, for whatever your flavor of optic is. You can get the Atero arms mount for that. The next is the optic. This is a Hollow Sun 507C. It has the dot, the circle dot, or the circle only. It's the X2 with the side battery. If you've been watching my channel, you actually know that this is a warranty optic. I had a 407C for like five or six or seven years for a long time. And when the dot finally gave out in it, I uh, contacted the warranty department, sent this, sent it in and actually forgot about it. And about five months later, I got this. So it was a long wait. But they did take care of it. So shout out Hollow Sun Warranty Department. And then up next we got, let me check my cheat sheet here. We have the charging handle. It's just a standard, oops, I bumped the camera. Sorry. If I can get it on camera, so... Everything's harder on camera. Give me a second. There we go. The charging handle. Just the oversized charging handle. You can get these at a bunch of different places. This one is 
just the uh, yeah i couldn't find which model this was it didn't look like the kusa ones because they're marked it looks just like it but they're marked right here i don't know if i got this from kusa or carolina shooter supply i'm not sure but if you look up ak oversized charging handles you can find these all over the internet and this one has been solid now <clears throat> When I first put it on, I shot about 100 rounds through it, and the bolt did walk out. I actually could tell because it was loose, so I caught it. I put it back in, and I actually red Loctited that just because I wanted it to stay. So it is red Loctited on, and I've shot, shoot, I don't know how many rounds, 500 or more rounds since then, and it's never walked free again. So just a oversized AK charging handle. <clears throat> then the safety selector is a Krebs Custom. This baby is smooth. It's not too tight, not too loose. It's perfect. It's got the ledge on it. So you can, you don't have to break your grip. You can just manipulate your safety with your trigger finger. That may have been loud. If so, I'm sorry. It was clicking kind of loud. Uh, so, yeah, just the Krebs, Krebs Custom. Uh, I might even have the... Uh, I just wrote down Krebs Custom uh, for a, a stamped receiver. There, there's several different ones, but this is the one for the stamped receiver. It actually, as you seen earlier, you can run your bolt back and lock it into the slot right there. And it's been a good safety selector. So Krebs Custom Safety Selector. Next, we'll talk about the trigger. When I got this gun, it actually came with a Tapco G2 trigger, which was really good. I actually think it was, I think I liked it better than the ALG, except it was the big hook style. And I like a more flat face, so I like the feel of this trigger. And it it wasn't so much better that I would go back and change it back because I really like the ALG, tr ALG trigger also. So this is the ALG. Let's see. I think I got the model on it. Yes, the AKT-EL Enhanced with Lightning Bow. Lightning bow. ALG trigger. And we'll do a trigger pull on this. I'm not sure what the poundage is. I need to get a trigger pull gauge it's barely got any take up on that just start pressing if i had to guess i would guess three pounds on that it's it's super good for an ak trigger and your reset very tactile and audible good trigger you can really run these triggers really fast great trigger highly recommend it i recommend the tapco g2 also that's a really good trigger i'm gonna need to get another ak to put that trigger in right now this is the only ak i have i've had several but i sell and trade and you know how gun guys are but when i find something i really like i hold on to it and this is actually my second Draco. The first one I got was uh, used, which I guess pretty much a lot of AKs are used in some form or fashion, but it had been dogged out. It was super loose. Uh, I couldn't get it to run anything hollow point. It wanted to hang up on, it would run standard regular ammo good, but you would put hollow points in it and it would hang up every time. So I got rid of it. I didn't want to, but I got rid of it and really regretted it. I was without a Draco for about two years. And they're hard to find around my area. You, you very rarely see a, a Draco. I've seen a couple mini Dracos, but I, I don't really like the super short ones. This is the model Draco I like the most. I seen one pop up in my local gun store. And it was this one, and it just had some plain, really light wood furniture on it. It had a, a blast, uh, a 14 to, 14 to 1 left-handed blast protector on it. And that was the muzzle, muzzle device. It was just threaded on. 
and no brace and uh i bought it and then i added all this stuff to it over a little bit of time and have what you see what you're looking at here where are we at we did the trigger see we got the brace is just a sb tactical triangle folding ak brace it does fold it doesn't lock in it's got a little detent there but it's really loose this brace is definitely usable it's definitely a usable brace but i wouldn't want to use it in any kind of duty or long term i really want as i mentioned earlier in the video i really want to get one of those cnc warrior braces those things look really solid and I had never seen one of those till some guys in the comment actually recommended it. And I've done some research on them and I really want one. Be awesome if CNC warrior would send me one out to test. That would be great. So if you ever see this CNC warrior, uh, hit me up. I will take one. <laughs> Next we've, we will talk about the sling. This is a really good AK sling. It's actually designed for the AK. It's a KUSA, Kalishnikov USA, Vickers AK sling. They're really fair price. They're really solid. They're really strong. The adjustment's a little bit stiff, but as you use it more and more, it breaks in a little bit. It's uh, designed for the AK the way it, it hooks up to the front here with the, this really solid cable. Uh, you can put a QD on this end of it, which I just got mine wrapped, but you can put a QD here and it will QD into there and you can, uh, convert it to a one point sling, which I don't really care for. I like two point, but yeah, KUSA Vickers AK sling. It's the sling I chose for the build. Then probably the thing I've got the most questions on was the furniture. And this furniture is shark fin, M-lock, walnut furniture. It come in with all three pieces, matching pieces, one, two, and three. And they have the M-lock panels recessed down into the wood, which is really awesome. I would like to get some... Uh, some Zenico would be awesome, but that stuff's kind of unobtainium, really, or so expensive, you don't want to obtain it. I would love to have some Zenico on here, but I like the wood. It gives it that classic with kind of the new school features look. I like it. I like the wood. It's a little bit expensive, but in my opinion, very worth it. The grip also come with it, and it's kind of blocky, but... The angle's really good, really comfortable to shoot with. Uh, highly recommend this furniture. I think I picked it up at KUSA. I found a few different spots online where you can find this, a couple different. But I did see it when I was looking earlier, when I was making my list at KUSA. It was out of stock, but it was a right around $300 for the furniture, so really good stuff kind of expensive but i like it and i think the last thing i got here for you is the magazine it's a long boy windowed mag i have a lot of mags i don't have any bakelite mags i get notified every time they come back in stock but they want like a hundred a hundred and ten ten dollars for a bakelite and i just don't have the extra at the time to to add it to the cart and buy it. But I will have a Bakelite magazine or two in the future. Hopefully, one would look so awesome in this gun. And I know I shouldn't say gun on YouTube. I keep forgetting. In this smoke wagon, uh, want a Bakelite. But it also looks really good with this. I think that magazine just sets it off. 
I had the 20 round mag pool in here and got a comment of someone uh, trying to make fun of me for having a mag pool magazine in an AK and I get it, but mag pool magazines, they work and they're very affordable. And if, and when I do put this in the truck and carry it, like I usually carry my little uh, PSA AR 11.5 inch pistol in the truck. So if someone knocks my window out and wants to run through my truck, they don't take this because I would probably cry if this got taken from me. I really, really, really love this gun. My son loves this gun and it's just a, a good smoke wagon. There I go saying the G word again. YouTube hates that. But I think that's about it for the build list which I didn't build this gun. This gun has had no zero gunsmith work. Everything has just been add-ons. Uh, I like tinkering with my stuff. I like tinkering with Glocks, uh, ARs, AKs. You no, know, I just like to do that kind of thing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. Uh, hit me up in the comments. I can't get that on right now. Hit me up in the comments and tell me uh, what you guys like to do. Are you AK guys or AR guys? I see a good mix in the comments when I ask that. I think if uh, SHTF happened right now and I had to grab something out of the safe, it would be my BCM. Uh, I have several ARs and a bunch of mags and a bunch of ammo. And I would arm the family up with Glocks and ARs, and we would go out in the SHTF situation if we had to. But hopefully that doesn't happen, and life keeps going, and inflation starts going down. Like the prices of stuff right now are really, really just crazy. Like it's just ridiculous. So hopefully something happens and that stuff comes down and I guess I've went on a rant about inflation. <laughs> Sorry, but I guess I'm going to finish it here. Uh, you got any questions about this? And uh, what was his name? Mr. Mr. 1976 Impala. I hope that answered your question. If not, reach out to me at Appalachian Smoke Wagon at gmail.com and I will send you a parts list. But I pretty much just went through everything and the four places where I got everything. And I hope that helps. Keep commenting. Keep subscribing. Keep supporting. This channel's growing. I appreciate it. Appalachian Smoke Wagon out for now. Until the next. See ya. Thanks for everything, guys.